Welcome to the Nicholas 11 X12 technology. Today we're looking at the Asus Zonar DX7.1 PCI Express sound card. Here's the box. Again, it's an Asus sound card and we're looking at the Zonar DX7.1 audio card which uses the PCI Express interface. Up here it says Dolby Home Theater technologies and rich gaming audio effects for the best PC audio upgrade. And we will see if that's true or not. Down here, as you can see, you get amazing Dolby features and DS3 DGX, vocal effects and and so on. And it's a 192kHz slash 24-bit card by the way. On the box you will also get a picture of the card itself. On this side you will see some specifications to which I'll go into detail later. And on the back of the box there's a description in different languages. The box quality seems to be really good if that matters. But now let's take a look inside. As you can see it comes with this high-end black box and right on top you see the sound card in anti-static bag. But we will take a look at it later. Underneath are the accessories. Here's an empty bag. Looks like these two tiny screws are lost somewhere in this box. Then you get one 3.5mm stereo to dual RCA cable. A SPDIF Toslink optical adapter and for those of you that don't have enough floppy connectors on your power supply, Asus also includes a Molex to floppy connector to power this card up. And here's an additional low profile bracket. Of course you also get a driver CD and the Zoner DX quick start guide and I'd really recommend reading that before you install or uninstall the sound card. But now let's move on to the sound card itself which is here in an anti-static bag. So here it is, first impression is good. I like the way it looks like and it's really low profile and should fit in any case. On the left you can see the golden jacks. The back looks very nice as well with that black or should I say more dark brown PCB. It uses a PCI Express X1 interface so there will be no problem when you install it in your PCIe X16 slot, the one your graphics card is using. Don't try to install it in an old school PCI slot because it will not work. Remember this is PCI Express, don't mix that up. Again there are lots and lots of of high quality components on this card and the ASUS AV100 HD audio processing unit is used which should work very very well. It's a single slot card and will obviously only use up one slot in your case or motherboard space. Here you can see the high quality golden ports. But now to the ports. On the left you see the microphone slash line in slash SPDIF out jack. This one is the headphone slash front out jack. This one is the side surround out jack. Now that's the center slash subwoofer out jack. And that's the rear slash back surround out jack. So I really like the card so far. To power this card up you will require a standard floppy connection from your power supply. If you don't have one like said before, Asus includes an adapter for that. Please make sure you don't forget to plug that in. This is the aux in header for your TV tuner for example. One thing I also like is that you also get a front panel audio header which is in the right place and position by the way. Not every sound card offers a front panel header for the audio jacks on your case for example. So again the card looks very beautiful with that black and golden color scheme, I can't complain. But now let's move on to the specifications. The Asus Zonar DX7.1 is a 7.1 HD audio sound card that uses the PCIe X1 interface. It features the Asus AV100 HD sound processor and has 24 bit slash 192kHz ADC slash DAC. It offers one mic slash line in and four line out jacks, but SPDIF is also supported with a task link adapter. This card also features Dolby Home Theater, Dolby Digital Live, Dolby Headphone, Dolby Virtual Speaker and Dolby Pro Logic 2. But now let's take a look at the control center in Windows. This is my test system. The driver installation was very easy and I had no problems at all. I didn't use the driver that came with the CD. Instead I downloaded the latest ones from the ACES website. Once you've installed the driver and restarted your computer, down here in the tray you will see a new icon which is this one. Now when you double click on it, a window pops up. We're looking at the ACES Zoner DX Audio Center. It looks pretty cool but old. I'd like to see better graphics here, something fresh. Down here you see once again it supports lots of Dolby features and on the right you could even turn the volume up and down with a type of slider. Underneath are two buttons. This one is the SVN button which basically is smart volume. The red one obviously is the mute button. Down here are five green buttons. 
These are different modes for different tasks. If you click that little arrow here, you'll get even more options. We are at the main tab now. This is where you can choose from different audio channels, but I can only use two channels due to my speaker setup. You could even choose from different sample rates, but I'd recommend going with the highest possible, which is PCM 192kHz here. Here is the analog out where you can choose your audio setup. In my case, I have a 2.1 audio system and that's why I have to leave it on two speakers. But if you don't like using speakers as much as I do, then just leave it on headphone if you're using a headset for gaming. Just to make sure everything runs how it should run, click the sign speaker icon and test out if all channels are working properly by clicking on the specific speakers. If you're using SPDIF then you could either go with PCM or Dolby Digital Live. Also you could use the virtual speaker or even the 7.1 virtual speaker shifter feature. As you can see there's so much to customize and that's what I really like. Like I'm showing here I'm just moving the specific speakers around to get the best sound for my environment. Let's say your room is too small or just doesn't have the right shape for a 7.1 speaker setup. Well, this would definitely help with the distancing. But now let's get to the mixer tab. In here we get two buttons, playback and record. Under playback you could easily change the volume of the channel separately. Under record you can decrease and increase the volume of the mic. Now let's get to the effect tab. In here you can change the environment, so basically effects, and you could also set the environment size. You choose from large, medium and small, on default it's on medium. On the right you see there's an equalizer and lots of presets for different genres of music. But you can also add your own customized preset, I'll quickly demonstrate you that. At first you make your decision on the equalizer. This is only a demonstration, the equalizer settings I choose are ridiculous. But when you're done, at the bottom there's a blank text field. You just name your preset and click that little plus button on the right to save it. If you'd like to remove it, just select the preset and hit the minus button. Now I'll show you the environment effects. You see there are a lot of them. I'll just hit play and will afterwards even show you how different the equalizer preset sound. <laughs> And now to the next tab called Karaoke. To enable that hit the on button. Here you get three different options, key shifting, vocal cancellation and mic echo. I'll at first demonstrate you the key shifting and then the vocal cancellation. I'll just use the sliders. Now I'll hit play. Watch.
unfortunately I couldn't really show how well the vocal cancellation worked out, because there was no vocalist in this song. I'm sorry I couldn't show that due to the copyright. The third option would be the mic echo. I'll start with the lowest amount first, but still you can hear a little bit of an echo. Now when I set it to the highest, you will hear a lot of echo. So that's a pretty really harsh. The flex bass tab is next. That way you can customize the bass LFE crossover frequency. On default it's on 120Hz, but now I'll demonstrate you that. On to the next tab named AEC. AEC stands for Acoustics Echo Cancellation and I'm sure you've had a problem like this in the past before. I've tried that out and it works very nice. So if you're using Skype, Windows Live Messenger or any other internet phone software then you should definitely enable that feature. Now to the last tab called Vocal Effects. And here are some additional features like the Voice EX or Local Voice EX for 3D games. On the right is the VOIP setting which stands for Voice Internet Phone. Right beside is a blue app list button. When you hit it a window comes up which basically allows you to add custom programs. Skype and MSN Messenger are automatically added. But if you want other applications to work with these settings too then you can add your custom programs like Audacity in my case. At first I'll show you Chat EX. Bathroom Concert Hall, Underwater, and Music Pub. Now to the Magic Voice feature. This is the default. Monster. Cartoon. Male. And Female. So these are some pretty cool features. This is the last thing I'll show you in this audio center. You see these five little green buttons? I'll show you what these do while letting the testing music play. Ok and now let's get to the recording devices. As you can see under recording we got microphone which is enabled right now, line in, aux, stereo mix and wave. Here are the microphone properties. Under custom there are three options, monitoring, microphone boost and front panel microphone. I definitely recommend leaving the microphone boost enabled. Under advanced you can set the format. I'll go with the best possible of course. Now I'm going to disable the microphone but instead I enable the stereo mix and this is what you hear from your speakers. Automatically the volume is on 100 and there's nothing you need to do. Just enable stereo mix and that's it. I really like that and it records at the same volume as the computer hears it. Again under advanced you can choose your format and I will of course also go with the best one here. I'll hit play and will record the song with Audacity. Obviously it's a very clean recording, it doesn't max out the volume. Some sound cards have such a problem. Problem, but this one doesn't so it works very nice. One thing I'd recommend is to unplug your microphone or mute it. Because even if you disable the mic it will still record when you have stereo mix enabled. That happens very often even with high end sound cards. But this would be a good side effect for recording gameplay with game sound and your voice. The Asus Zonar DX7.1 PCI Express sound card is a very good choice for the price. For someone that needs great playback and recording quality Go ahead, it's a great choice. It doesn't matter if it's playback or recording, it's a lot better than the best onboard sound solutions on motherboards. Especially if I had problems recording with my microphone because I got horrible static noise when I was using the onboard sound. But thanks to this sound card the problem immediately got fixed. So for people that listen to music, watch movies or game a lot and need to hear the enemy's position, well it's one of the best choices for the price. Pros are good price performance ratio, the sound is crisp clear and very good, even recording works really good. Then it offers lots of features and I also like the great design and color scheme. I have nothing to say for the cons and so I give this beast of a sound card a 10 out of 10 and definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.